Hey, welcome back to a four-part mini-series, The Fool's Journey Through Tarot. And today is the third video, and we're going to talk about adulthood as the fool meets the devil and travels through all the different archetypes and meets all the different experiences and then ends up with the world. What does that mean? Stay watching. The Fool's Journey is coming up next. The fool comes to the foot of an enormous black mountain where he sees a half goat, half god. At his hoofs, naked people linked to the god's throne by chains, engaged in every indulgent imaginable. Sex, drugs, food, gold, drink. The closer the fool gets, the more he feels his own earthly desires rising in him. Lust, passion, obsession, greed. And he yells, I refuse to give in to you, he roars at the goat god, resisting all of, with all his might. The creature returns with a curious look. All I am doing is bringing out what you already have within you, the beast responds. Such feelings are nothing to fear, nothing to be ashamed of, and nothing to be avoided. The fool gestures angrily at the chained men and women. You say that even though they all look completely enslaved. The goat god mimics the fool's gestures and says, take another look, fool. The fool does so. He realizes that the chain collars around the women and the men are wide enough and wide open that they can easily just slip off their heads. They can be free if they wish to be, the goat god says. Though you are right, I am a god and of your strongest desires, but you see here only those who have allowed their desires to control them. At this, the goat god gestures upward towards the peak of the mountain. Do you see those who have not allowed their impulses and aspirations to take them up to the top of the mountain? They can keep you from following your passion to the highest heights, the fool realizes the truth in this, that he has been mistaken, that the goat got here. He understands now that it is not the creature of evil, but the great power and the lowest and the highest of both, both of the beast and God. Like all power, it can be frightening and dangerous, but it is also the key to freedom and transcendence, if understood and well used. As the fool leaves the throne of the goat god, he comes upon the tower. It's fantastic, it's magnificent, and it's even familiar. In fact, the fool himself helped build the tower back in the day when the most important thing to him was making his mark on the world, improving himself better than other men. Inside the tower at the top, arrogant men still live. Convinced of their rightness, seeing the tower again, the fool feels as if a lightning has just flashed across his mind. He thought that he had left that old self behind as he started the spiritual journey, but he realizes here that he hasn't. He's been seeing himself like the tower, like the man inside, as long as, as singular and superior, when in fact there's actually no such thing. So captured by the shock of this insight that he opens his mouth and releases a shout. To his astonishment and terror, this shout has taken form and the bolt actually of lightning slashes down from the heavens, striking the tower and sending all of its residents leaping into the waters below. At that moment, it is over. The tower is rubble. Only rocks remained. Stunned and shaken to the core, the fool experiences grief, profound fear, and even disbelief, but also a strange clarity of vision as the inner eye has finally truly opened. He tore down his resistance to change and sacrificed. He broke free from the fear. He dissolved his disbelief in opposites and he shattered the chains of ambition and desire. But here and now, he was done with the hardest. He destroyed the lies he held about himself. 
With that, it was bare and absolute, the absolute truth. And on that, he knew it's time to rebuild his soul. On the bleak landscape where the tower stood, the fool sits, empty, despairing. He hoped to find himself on the spiritual journey, but now he feels lost. Sitting on the cold stones, he gazes up at the night sky, wondering what's left. And with that, he notices nearby a beautiful girl with two water urns. As he watches, she kneels by the pool of water, illuminated by the reflected of the starlight. She empties the urns, one into the pool and one onto the thirsty ground. What are you doing? He walks over and asks her. She looks up at him, her eyes twinkling with the stars. I'm refilling the pool so that those who are thirsty may drink. And I'm also watering the earth so that come spring, the seeds will grow. And she adds, come drink. The fool comes to kneel by her and drink the pool of water. The water tastes wonderful, like liquid starlight. I can see you're sad, the girl continues, and I know why. But you must remember that you have not lost all. Knowledge and possibilities and hope, you still have those, and like the stars, they can lead you to the future. Even as she says this, she begins to fade. Like dew, she's vanishing. All that remains is the gleam that was the center of her forehead. This rises up until it settles into the night sky as a shining star. Follow your star, the woman continues. Her voice seems to sing from that light. And just have hope. The fool takes a breath and rises. In the dark night, in the desolate land. But for the first time, he has a guiding light to show him the way. Distant as it feels, it heals his heart and restores his faith. And he understands that the star represents hope. Following the star, the moon travels through the night and the full moon arises, illuminating for him a watery path. And he begins to feel a little disoriented, as if he's walking in his sleep. He passes under the moon between two pillars, ancient and strange. Suddenly, he looks around, and he finds himself in a completely different land entirely. When he was in the presence of the high priestess, he saw hints of this dark land through her sheer, her veil, draped behind her throne. And later, when he hung up from the tree, he felt himself between the physical world and this one. As the fool continues to walk, his walking path turns into water, and he finds himself standing hip-deep in the powerful pool of the salty moonlight water. There, by the shore, is a small boat, and he notices it has no rudder and no oars. The fool realizes at this point that he has two choices. He can lose himself in this desolate primal land of madness and illusion, stay howling with the wolves, or maybe even be hunted down, or he can get into that boat and trust himself to the river. The moon will be in control either way, but he realizes in the boat he can surrender to the powers of the unconscious and the natural world. This will at least take him somewhere. As the artist and the poets and the magician knows, inspiration, vision, genius, and moon magic are the rewards for such surrender. So the fool gets into the boat and shoves off. The waters lull him to sleep. He sees and feels the moonbeams on his face as it lights his path. There is the mistress of the dark land gazing down on him, and he notices to the side two beautiful, approving eyes. It's the high priestess. She's come to say hello again and goodbye. Fool wakes it down from his long, restless night to find that the wild river has ended. Quietly floating into a serene pool, there is a walled garden around this pond dominated by roses, lilies, splendid nodding flowers. Stepping ashore, he watches the sun rise overhead. Bright and golden, the day is clear. A child's laughter attracts his attention and he sees a little boy ride a small white pony into the garden. 
Come, says the little boy, leaping off his horse and running up to the fool. Come see. And the child proceeds to take the fool's hand and enthusiastically points out all manner of things. Look at the busy insects in the grass, the seeds in the petals of the sunflowers, the way the light sparkles on the pond. He asks questions of the fool, simple but profound ones, like, why is the sky blue? He sings songs with his new friend and even plays games. This truly is the experience At one point, of joy. the fool stops, blinking up and looking at the sun so large and golden overhead. He finds himself smiling, wider and brighter than he ever has, and certainly in a long time. Since he started on his spiritual journey, he's been tested and tried, confused and scared, dismayed and amazed. But this is the first time he's been simply and purely happy. His mind feels illuminated, his soul light, as bright as the sunbeam. Like the great sun itself, this child, with his simple question, games, and songs, has helped the fool see the world and himself anew. To wonder at it and appreciate it. Who are you? The fool asked the child at last. The child smiles, <laughs> and this seems to shine and grow brighter and brighter until it turns into just pure sunlight. I'm you, the boy's voice says throughout the garden. A new you. And as if the words fill the fool with warmth and energy, he comes to realize that this garden, the sun above, and the child all exist within him. He has just met his new inner light. As the fool leaves the garden of the sun, he feels near the end of his journey. He's ready to take that final step, but something's keeping him from doing this. It's holding him back, so he gazes up, hoping to find guidance from the sun again. Instead, he sees above him a fairy angel, beautiful and yet at the same time, terrible. You are right, the angel figure confirms. You have one last step to take in your journey, one final step to your completion. But you can't do that until you're ready to lay your past to rest. The fool hears this, and he's slightly perturbed. Lay it to rest, he asks. I thought I'd left it all behind. She says, there's no way to do that. So the angel observes. She says, each step you take, fool, wears down your shoe just a bit. And so it shapes the next step you take, and the next, and the next. Your past, you see, is always under your feet. You can't hide from it, you can't run from it, and you can't even rid yourself of it. But you can call it up, and you can come to terms with it. But here's the deeper question. Are you willing to do that now? So the angel hands the fool a small trumpet. And the fool's a little hesitant at first, but he knows this is his final decision. Either he go forward or stay where he is. So he grabs the trumpet and he blows. And the trumpet songs echo across the sky. It vibrates, seeming to crack open the earth. And from under the fool's feet, memories arise. Images of innocent youth, his challenges, his loves, his failures, his losses, his successes, his disillusionment, and even all his wisdom. For the first time, he does not try to leave them, ignore them, forget them, but he accepts them. They are, he sees, nothing to fear. They happened, and they're gone now. He alone carries them into the present. With that understanding, the memories vanish. Though they remain in his mind, they no longer have the power over him. He is now free, free of them. He's reborn and holy and even present. The fool turned to take its final step along his path, and he found himself right back where he started from. At the edge of the very same cliff he almost stepped over when he was too young to look where he was going. But now he sees the same position, 
so differently. It's all about self, mind, and the body, past and future, the individual and the world, all in one, as above, so below, and all opposites are each other, including the fool and the mystic, who are both doorways to the secrets of the universe. With a knowing smile, the fool takes his final step right off the cliff, and instead of falling, he soars higher and higher until the whole of the world is his to see. And there he dances, surrounded by the stars and the one with the universe, ending in a sense where he began, beginning again at the end. The world turns, <laughs> and the fool's journey now is complete. But remember, it would be a fool to think it ends there. For the journey starts all over again, but at a higher level of consciousness. Thank you so much for watching. See you next video. This video is part of a four-part mini-series, so check out my cards where you will find the rest of this series. Bye now!